here who has an electronic device, would you please turn it off or to silent? Ms. Brandon, will you call the roll, please? Dickerson? Here. Sam? Here. Blink? Here. Wright? Here. Bailey? Here. Neesmith? Here. Bell? Here. Herod? Present. Gertz? Here. Hamby? Here. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion for the approval of the minutes of December 1st, December 15th? So moved. Second. Mr. Sims, who is the second? Uh, Mr. Bailey. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any written communications, Ms. Brown? For the interest in the record, we have notification from Transportation and Public Works Director David Clark of acceptance of the following rights of way for streets in Columbia Brookside Subdivision Brookside Avenue, Summer Brook Circle, Green Lane, and Barnett Trail. Great. Thank you. Uh, we'll now begin our monthly business meeting. There will be several opportunities for citizen input tonight. The first will be for items on our consent agenda, which are items one through five, then items six through seven, which are listed under old business, and then eight through ten under new business. There will be one final opportunity at the end of the meeting for anything that's not on tonight's agenda. And I'll let you know as each of these opportunities are available. The rules of the commission allow each uh, speaker three minutes. There's a light on Ms. Spratlin's desk that will turn yellow at two and a half minutes. Please have your comments finished before the three-minute uh, time limit so that I won't have to interrupt you. I request that you refrain from cheering, jeering, or other demonstrations and show considerations for all of our speakers. Uh, now is the time that any citizen who would like to speak to uh, items on our consent agenda, which again are items one through five, come to the podium, give us your name, address, and which item you're speaking to. Point of order, Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. You omitted item D. Sorry about that. That's a very <laughs> important item. <laughs> Before you come to the podium, let's, let's backtrack and um, go to, um, we, we have uh, on our uh, agenda, election of the mayor pro tem. Do I have a um, motion or nomination? Sure. Th thank you, Madam Mayor, and I'll be, I'll be glad to make that. And um, it's unusual that we have a mayor pro tem for two years. Uh, it's a, we, last time we did that, I'm sure all of y'all remember the reign of uh, Commissioner Herod. <laughs> Or as, or as he liked to be called at the time, the Sith Lord. Uh, so, uh, so it's a real pleasure to to uh, have uh, Commissioner Sims want to do this again and want to serve uh, in this capacity. He, he does make the meetings run on time, and he also uh, makes sure that uh, that he represents this body and this government well at different functions that the mayor is not able to be at. So, uh, so with that said, I'd like to nominate. Commissioner Sims as Mayor Pro Tem for 2016. Thank you, Ms. Tan. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Mr. Sims. And that was one of the most important items on tonight's <laughs> agenda. So thank you. Uh, who seconded? Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Okay, now if anybody would like to speak to our consent agenda, uh, please come forward. Anybody interested in talking on items um, one through five? Okay, seeing none, we'll come behind the rail. And um, we, I'll ask if any commissioner wants to remove anything from consent agenda. Okay. I entertain a motion for the adoption. Uh, Mr. Neesmith. Second. Mr. Sims, thank you. All in favor? Ordinance. <coughs> oh, yes, we do have an ordinance on one of them. Yes. Yes. Uh, an ordinance to amend the FY 2016 annual operating and capital budget for Athens, Clark County, Georgia, so as to provide funding for operating expenses related to juvenile court and for other purposes. Thank you. Y'all see why we need Mr. Sims. <laughs> uh, okay, now, um, do you have a motion? Yes. Set, motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll move on to our old business, uh, which are items six and seven. If anyone would like to speak to either of those items, this would be the time to come to the podium. LeBeau Bryan, 30 Jefferson Circle, regarding the Sylvia Circle. And um, first I want to thank Melissa Link for meeting with the neighbors of the circles, for arranging meetings with the Planning Committee Commission, and also with the developer of the Dialysis Center. I think if all goes as planned, we're going to have a bad situation, be as good as possible. However, I'd like to add that Yona and the circle shouldn't be happening. We should not, there is all kinds of businesses on Prince Avenue that have entrances and exits onto Prince Avenue. 
So to continue to force traffic into neighborhoods that are very narrow and have no sidewalks and can't have sidewalks, I find unacceptable. And I really think we make a choice to be in the city. We know we have to make compromises. But it's illogical. It's simply illogical when you have already so many businesses that are entering and exiting off Prince. I don't see why all new businesses have to exit into the neighborhoods. Finally, I'd just like to say that to expect the neighbors to come up with the money for sidewalks is also unreasonable. I would happily pay more money in my taxes for equitable sidewalks where they should be. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Kristen Morales, 338 Satula Avenue. I'm also speaking to the Sylvia Circle item. Um, I uh, live a few blocks away from this, and um, this is a situation where we're lucky that the developer has um, stepped up and is talking with the residents and has worked out a compromise and is uh, willing to speak with the commissioner about their development. Um, this isn't, isn't always the case, and there's nothing to compel developers to work with the residents in the neighborhoods that will be affected by these uh, types of projects. Um, so I just think it's unfortunate that there's nothing compelling developers to, um, you know, the, the, this exiting of traffic into the neighborhoods is, um, is a little ridiculous. And um, it would be really nice if there was something to, in place to have developers work with the neighborhoods to mitigate the situation. And um, this is also a great opportunity where we could have had the chance to look at opportunities to um, expand sidewalks or look at our options and um, it's unfortunate that we only have the one new option on the table and I know it was promised to come back and take another look at the sidewalk situation and um, it'd be really nice to see that come before the legislative review committee again so um, thank you very much thank you Ms. Morales anyone else hey Lou Jesse Hool, 436 Hill. Um, this is for old and new business, yeah? This section, or is this just for six and seven? Six and seven. Okay, so eight through 10 is separate? Yes, sir. Sorry, it's just worded differently on the paper. It's Back all right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ann Woodruff Conley at 203 South Finley Street and I'm here to speak on behalf of the Five Points Business Association. Um, as you well know, Five Points Business Association is an um, organization that represents both the business owners and the landowners in that area. And we are hoping for a parking study. Um, we are finding that Five Points is um, how do you say, uh, declining. We've got open businesses, and part of the problem is that there is no place for patrons to park when they come to the area. Um, we are hoping that a parking study will give us some guidance so that we can work together as landowners, business owners, and the community to um, help bring more business into the area. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Connelly. Hello, my name is Corky Sams. I live at 1110 Wild Azalea Lane, and I'm also speaking to item number seven, the parking study. Uh, I was born in Athens. I was raised on Millage Circle. I had a wonderful time playing in that neighborhood and hanging out in Five Points. As an adult, my brother, sister, and I have been property owners in the commercial area of Five Points for the past 50 years, and we've enjoyed watching Five Points evolve over that time. Uh, the Property owners, and particularly the merchants, have done a wonderful job of developing, developing a village-like atmosphere. There's some great shops, great places to eat. You can eat a gourmet meal, have a hot dog at Ad Drug or an ice cream cone at Hudson's. It's just a fun place to be. Unfortunately, it's been uh, it's success is killing it, though. It's like a field of dreams. If you build it, too many people will come, and they do. 
people come from all over. It's creating traffic problems, but particularly it is a parking problem. The property owners and the merchants have been working together for years to try and solve this. We've had a lot of conversations, a lot of meetings. Uh, we've built more parking spaces. We've interconnected the parking lots. We share parking when you can with the other businesses in the area. But unfortunately, there's still not enough parking, and we need your help. Y'all have been very good at helping the other communities, the other neighborhoods that have their own special issues, and we hope you'll help us with this, with the parking study. Uh, with luck, they'll have open eyes, and they can come up with some new solutions that'll help us solve this problem. We all want Five Points to thrive like it has and be a, a, such a viable part of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sands. Anyone else wish to speak to these two items? Okay. We'll come behind the rail now, and um, the first item is the uh, Sylvia Circle parking restrictions. You have an ordinance, Mr. Behrman. Yes, <clears throat> an ordinance to amend the Code of athens Clark County, Georgia, with respect to parking restrictions on Sylvia Circle and for other purposes. Thank you. And I believe this is Ms. Link's item. Yeah, I, I just want to go over um, how this came about. Uh, Sylvia Circle was put in a situation that is pretty much exactly the situation that the residents of Yona Avenue were put in, um, where we have some new development on Prince Avenue and a commercial driveway emptying commercial traffic into the neighborhood. Um, thankfully, the developer did meet with, with the residents and um, you know has agreed to some really minor concessions that will actually make a pretty big impact in directing the traffic away from the residents. Um, but other issues came to light with parking um, in the neighborhood. Um, it's an extremely narrow street, um, a, a circular street. Um, and when there are cars parked on either side, there's nowhere for people to walk or for cyclists to go. You know, they directly confront, um, confront cars. And um, a lot of people do walk and bike. You know, it's, a, it's an in-town neighborhood, and, and um, there's a bus stop right across Prince Avenue from the neighborhood. A lot of people take the bus. Um, most of the children walk to Chase Street Elementary. Um, and I know in some neighborhoods, people want to add on-street parking in their neighborhoods as a means of traffic calming. Well, in this situation, they want to remove on-street parking as a means of giving pedestrians some place to walk in the street so they can safely share the street with, with the car traffic. And this is a neighborhood where it's not possible to add sidewalks, even if the resources were there. Um, the, they're very narrow front yards. They're very modest homes. It's a working-class neighborhood, a lot of rental properties. Um, and, and so we feel like this will be a good solution to give these folks a little bit more safety when they're, when they're walking and, and biking in their neighborhood. Um, and I've talked with many residents and, and passed information out to them. And, um, you know, there's also some issues with some overflow parking from the Social Security building, which was another newer Prince Avenue development that has driveways spilling out in, into the neighborhood streets. Um, and that's caused overflow parking. So we feel like, you know, um, TPW has come up with a pretty good solution for yellow curbing sections of that neighborhood that will increase safety not just for pedestrians but also for, all, for cars. You know, it will keep some of those sight lines open um, for cars that are exiting those driveways and exiting onto Prince Avenue. So, um, and I look forward to hearing about some of the conversations that the Legislative Review Committee has about further measures to implement pedestrian safety in our neighborhoods. I think there's a lot of places within our code where we can make some very slight changes that will, will go a long way in increasing pedestrian safety and not being too burdensome on developers. So I, I hope that we'll look at some of those. Thank you, Slayton. Did you want to make a motion? I'll move that we adopt uh, this proposal to uh, restrict parking on Sylvia Circle. We have a second. Second. Uh, who was that? Mr. Sims. Uh, okay, I have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll now go to item number seven, which is the five points commercial district parking study, and that's Ms. Bell's item. Would you like to address that? Thank you. Thank you so much. Athens is a changing. That's a southern term, but it's come to reality with a lot of the areas that we've been addressing, <laughs> and I appreciate the management looking at what we're looking at for five points study. We've looked at the corridor on the Atlanta Highway. We're looking at the Highway 78 East for the, their needs for their corridor, and I'm grateful that they're looking at Five Points as another part of that identity of, of Athens. There's been some, a lot of positive support with our landowners, 
as you heard from tonight, the developers that live that work in that area, certainly the business owners. But most of all, it's the customers that I hear and we need to address their needs. And that's my primary concern of what we need to look at for the success of this study to go forward. And I would appreciate your support from the commission. And I certainly appreciate the support of my community area and constituents. And I now move that we go forward with item seven. Okay. I'll, I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Did you get those, Jean? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I was about to ask for that. Thank you, Mr. Sims. See why we need a good mayor pro tem. Um, and so we'll, we will now move to our um, new business. And, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Sims. Do you have a second from, okay, I have a second from Mr. Herod. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we're under suspension rules now, and we'll go to item number eight. And the uh, first item. Oh, sure. Input uh, from, uh, once I get confused, I stay confused. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to items eight through nine, eight through ten? Now, Mr. Tool, come on, come on up. Well, hello again. I too was confused, Madam Mayor. Um, it's easy in this yeah. in this room. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. Uh, this wasn't. But uh, it's worded on here is that the public input happens all at once. So I don't know if there's a way to maybe like slightly tweak that so easily confused people like myself don't waste some of the precious meeting time. Um, but I wanted to speak to item number 10, the resolution with reference to discrimination. Um, so I wanted to start by thanking all of you behind the rail for responding to this very old and deeply rooted problem of discrimination in our community, um, which happens um, in, on many fronts in many ways to many people. Um, and I also wanted to thank you for the encouragingly rather comprehensive list of bases in which it applies. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to say I look forward to this hopefully not only being passed tonight, um, but then applied sternly and appropriately to the various offenders who already exist in our community or who might unfortunately exist in the future. Um, and maybe related to that, I'd love to see this be a first step towards um, a stronger, more binding ordinance in the future. Um, this, res this resolution gets me excited to read. I get excited reading the text. I'd love to see it in the form of an ordinance slightly tweaked in the future. I think that would be, that would, that would really make this city stand out um, for all the values that I think everyone in this room um, thinks this city should stand out for. So thank you. Keep up the good work. Uh, have a good day. Happy New Year. Thank you, Ms. Tool. Anyone else wish to address this item? or even any of these items, 8 through 10. Good evening, Mayor Commission. Uh, I also do want to uh, speak to item number 10. And again, just uh, begin by thanking uh, the commission, uh, specifically uh, Commissioner Herod, Gertz, and Abby for working on this resolution. I'm sure others of you behind the reel also worked, and I appreciate the time that was put into this. Um, uh, I'm, very, I'm very proud to, to live in a, a county that has decided to take on this issue on the government level. Uh, even though, as, as I'm sure we all know, this is a, obviously not solely a, a government uh, issue problem that we have here with discrimination and racism. Um, and it's something that, as a community, we need to be working on together and stepping up for. But it is uh, great to see that the, the commission has decided to lead here. And I also uh, want to see this ordinance actually put into place at a minimum uh, when it comes to the alcohol licenses. But something that I would like to uh, stress if you guys are feeling ambitious, and I hope you guys are feeling ambitious, to uh, go ahead and, and, and go a little bit further, such as what Atlanta did a few years back, and actually put in place uh, something that Athens for Everyone has been pushing for, a, a human rights commission. This is honestly uh, very similar, although it's, it's more limited, but uh, something that can go past just something that's happening at places that serve alcohol but it can be something that happens at all places of business. Uh, the county also does issue uh, business licenses, uh, not just alcohol licenses. So I would hope that maybe you guys could work and find some leverage there so that this can go beyond not just downtown. This could also go affect businesses that are on Atlanta Highway, they're on Lexington, anywhere in this community because discrimination and racism is not limited to the downtown here. And it's something we need to be fighting on all fronts. Again, thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm really proud of you all. Thank you. Thank you. For those who don't know, that's Mr. Tim Denson. We're all confused tonight, Tim.
Good evening, Mayor. Good evening to everyone. My name is Noah D. Johnson. Um, I moved here about four years ago. My wife and I, we um, brought an event here called the Athens Hip Hop Awards. We do this event every year. We award um, business entrepreneurs, artists, you know, people from the creative community and, and um, supportive community also with awards just to inspire them to keep moving. Since I've been here, um, I love this town. Uh, it's something about the town. There's a, a vibe here that I really love, the creative vibe. And I spend a lot of time downtown. My wife, my kids, you know, from day one, we, we frequent downtown. And we don't see a lot of diversity downtown, you know, at all with people frequenting the bars and, you know, frequenting the businesses down there. And we wonder, like, what was that about? And you know, after a while, people was coming to us for different reasons, telling us about, you know, some of the things that was happening in the bars with the dress codes. And it was unbelievable to me that, you know, a city with such a good vibe and music scene and creative scene that still would have something like this going on in 2016. And it's great to see the response, you know, from the articles and from the students talking about their experience with it. I'm, I guess I'm here representing the community saying that it's not only the students, the community also is experiencing these same things downtown. And I want to commend you guys on a speedy response with the resolution towards this situation, but also <coughs> hoping that the resolution can lead to an ordinance. You know, I, I've done some studying to, to know the difference. And I think that an ordinance would definitely, you know, be something that will last longer and make people more responsible for their actions. And and an old speech I, want, I would like to say right now, uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to injustice everywhere. It's not my saying. It's Martin Luther King. I'm sure y'all heard it. And once again, I'd like to thank you for the resolution being on the table, and hopefully it can turn into an ordinance. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mark Bell, 120 Cypress Manor. Athens. Um, I just want to go back with uh, what the two guy was it Tim or Tim. any anything that gets put in writing needs to cover every business in Athens. Uh, we cannot be as bars discriminated against, uh, but any business that has any kind of discrimination policies, they need to be part of anything that's written. It's not fair to just do it for some businesses. You have to do it for all. So I'm glad he he made a much better speech about it than I did. But um, I'm here to echo that um, and uh, I just hope you know I've met with some of y'all personally and been, been able to discuss some things uh, not everybody but uh, I'm easy to get a hold of be glad to talk to anybody about anything with any of this and uh, please raise our drink prices to two dollars thanks <laughs> min thank minimum two dollars thank you thank you mr. Bell hello uh, Jared Zomer 110 Green Top Way and I uh, appreciate everybody uh, taking time to listen to me. Uh, I saw this on uh, the AJC.com today, and I was surprised. And I just have three, three points to make. Um, uh, number one is I reject the notion that we're racist and homophobes here. I think that Athens is a stalwart in, in you know, inclusiveness and kindness. It's a kind city. It's a compassionate city. And to basically try to legislate, you know, trying to be nice is is kind of a bogus plan. Now you notice that the first uh, few people came up here didn't give any address because they're students. And the students don't live in the community. They live on campus. We all have to deal with each other. Our kids go to school. My kids go to public schools. I see everybody. I see my neighbors. We all get along. We know what's real. So it sounds more like there might be a racist bouncer issue or homophobic bouncer issue, but I don't think that you need to apply you know, specific rules on something that could be taken advantage of or even open up opportunities for corruption. And if you do apply it across all business, you know, who's going to be the, are you going to appoint a czar to do that? If any, anybody has any problems with customer service, they're going to lodge a complaint. Uh, <clears throat> second point is, you know, I, I don't drink. I quit drinking two years ago, but uh, Basically, using agenda-driven statistics, I overheard that scientific polls are still, you know, practical or something along those lines. You need to set up a commission and get the other point of view and possibly even, you know, do a vote, you know. Don't let a bunch of activist students 
set policy for Athens, Georgia. They're going to be gone here soon. The third thing is I've been commuting to Atlanta and other places for 10 years. I bring Atlanta money, other money back into this town. And if you're going to waste it on litigation, which is going to happen as soon as you pull the license for someone because someone got their feelings hurt, there's going to be lawsuits. Don't waste my tax money. I'll move if, if this goes through, you know. Uh, it, it's just anti-commerce, anti-constituents, and let's think it through before we push it through in two weeks on, uh, you know, student break. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Summer. Anyone else wish to speak? Houston Gaines, uh, 250 McWhorter Drive. I am a student. I have the honor of serving. Uh, my fellow students is the University of Georgia Student Government Association Vice President. I have lived here my whole life, 20-year uh, 20, 20 resident. But I come here again to speak on the same issue, issue item number 10, relating to discrimination. As many of you know, this is an issue that we've been working on here for a while, and uh, we're here to thank you for your efforts so far. SGA President John L. Simpson, SGA Chief of Staff Ryan Loke, myself and other members of SGA have been in many meetings and discussions with several of you all uh, about this issue. Let's face it, it is real. Discrimination is happening in the bars downtown Athens, and I'm sure it's happening in other parts of the community, but the students do especially see it in the downtown bar scene. Since we all have been working together, I think the bars have started to notice, and, and frankly, I think we're heading in the right direction. You know, when we first met with the mayor a few months ago, uh, we, we really made a lot of progress together. But this was well before any of this hit the media, and since day one, she's been extremely supportive of us, and I can't thank her enough for her, for her help. After that, SGA gathered a handful of testimonies that were pulled together uh, through, through uh, minority student organizations across campus. Some of these have now been uh, made public through the media and brought this issue to the forefront of the community. But we got nearly 70 first-hand accounts of discrimination, uh, and we took those to the mayor, several commissioners, uh, the county attorney, and the police chief. And the stories are frankly disturbing, and in the year 2016, it's, it's frankly unacceptable. These accounts don't point to a single bar or single bar owner single bouncer, but they rather address a larger problem of discrimination uh, that, that affects the culture of downtown Athens and the inclusivity and diversity that the county and the university have worked so hard to cultivate. Tonight's resolution is a great step forward, but of course there's more to be done. I've been grateful to work with all of you all and, and, and that you all work with John L. Ryan, me, and, and frankly the rest of the student body. We can't thank you enough for your willingness to lead on this issue and, and serve this community. We look forward to continue working with you in the next steps ahead, but I think tonight sends a clear message to the community that discrimination is unacceptable. Hope you'll support the resolution, and thank you all for your help. Thank you, Mr. Gaines. Anyone else wish to speak? My name is Jasmine Johnson, um, 272 North Bluff Road, Athens, Georgia. I just wanted to come up here and say, like my husband said before, we've been living in Athens for four years. We invest in Athens business-wise. We invest in the communities. I have a youth program that I do with the kids here, so we're invested in Athens. We plan on living in Athens. We plan on raising our children here. When this issue comes up with discrimination time and time again, I don't see color. I'm originally from Jamaica. I don't see color. But it comes up so often since I've been here. This is a nice town to live, but it does exist. The, the discrimination does exist. There's clearly um, some type of separation that's going on, a silent separation to me. It does exist, and I feel like it does need to be addressed. And I'm, I was very pleased to see that it was brought to, um, it was put in the newspaper and it was the ordinance was in place and that the resolution has come in place. Now, I don't think it's something that we could just look past and say it's not here because it is here. And I just want to make it clear, we live here. We invest here. I, I, I teach here. I'm, I teach GED classes here for Athens Tech. I have a youth program. I also, like my husband said, we do the Athens Hip Hop Awards. We, we do that out of our pocket, out of our hearts and our pockets because we like this town and we want to see the town be a, a, a wonderful place for everybody. So I just wanted to reiterate, we do live here. We're not students and, you know, going by, we plan on staying here and that's why we want to see something done. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Anyone else? Okay, we'll come behind the rail then, and we are um, ready to deal with item number eight, 
uh, which is uh, Victims uh, Crime Act grant. We have a resolution, Mr. Behrman. An I mean, an ordinance, I'm sorry. An ordinance to amend the FY 2016 annual operating and capital budget for Athens Clark County, Georgia, so as to provide grant funding from the Prosecuting Attorney's Council of Georgia for one full-time position and associated expenses to support assistance to crime victims and for other purposes. Would you not, would like to make a motion I'm on this? Move that we accept. Second. We have motion to second any discussion on this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll go to item number nine, which is a request for the creation of a full-time victim advocate position in the DA's office. Is there an ordinance, Mr. Behrman? Yes. An ordinance to amend the FY, I'm sorry, an ordinance to amend the 2016 annual operating and capital budget for Athens, Clark County, Georgia, so as to provide funding to the district attorney's office for expenses related to an additional full-time victim advocate position and for other purposes. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. You have a oh, motion, I'm Ms. Sorry. Dixon. Oh, excuse me. Before you go on that, Madam I want to point out you have before you the ordinance that the attorney just read. It was inadvertently left out of the agenda report, so if the um, motion could uh, indicate support for option number one with the inclusion of the budget amendment ordinance, then we'll make that correction. Thank you. So, so move that that it include the uh, ordinance amendment. <laughs> have a motion to have a second. Second. Mr. Sims. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, now we get to item number 10, which is the resolution um, with reference to discrimination. And uh, do I have a motion on that? Mr. Gert, I mean, um, Mr. Herod. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I will make a motion to approve the resolution. I did want to make a, uh, um, just some brief comments um, before I do that though. Um, obviously the issue that uh, has brought about the, the resolution um, relates to some matters that were brought to the attention really of the community uh, relating to some activities that um, have uh, alleged to have been occurring um, downtown. And um, I think given the um, amount of information that has been brought uh, to our attention that I think that we would be failing morally as a government if we were to sit back and, and do nothing. Um, I think that um, by passing this resolution, we make a clear uh, statement as a government of the kinds of values that we um, uh, adhere to here in athens Clark County. Uh, I don't think that we can uh, legislate um, how people feel about each other in their hearts, but we can certainly um, enforce the law when it comes to the question of, of discrimination or non-discrimination. Um, so myself and Commissioner Gertz and Hamby, uh, together with uh, aid from um, the mayor's office and from our attorney and our uh, manager's office, um, put together this resolution. Uh, it is, as it stands, a resolution um, that states where I think we feel, uh, where we stand as a government, uh, but there is a, a requirement, assuming that this is passed, that the, ma the manager's office and the attorney's office um, investigate the possibilities of uh, addressing um, our alcohol ordinance so as to be able to um, come back with an ordinance at some point um, in the future. So I don't know whether it's appropriate to read the resolution in its entirety or have the attorney do so or just make a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve and that will be sufficient legally. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Thank you, Ms. Terry. Do I have a second? Ms. Second. Lee? I'll, I'll second, but I also have a handful of questions about the, um, the resolution. Um, I've, I've gotten a few questions from constituents. Um, as a resolution, is it enforceable? Is there any means of, I mean, right, right now until there's you know, some kind of amendments to our alcohol ordinance, there's no way to really enforce this. Is that correct? Is, is that? That's correct. Okay, so this basically is a resolution giving direction to the manager's office and attorney's office to come up with some language to enforce this. Um, I also have a question right now. How can people report this kind of discrimination? It seems like 
I mean, I personally have been hearing stories for years, and it's not just students and young people. It's middle-aged adults who have been dis being discriminated against, not only on basis of race, but also sexual orientation. So this is definitely needed, and it's definitely rampant in the community. And, um, you know, I will argue that it's also fairly new. Um, you know, I think it's a cult, it's indicative of a, a more widespread culture of, of white privilege that, that's kind of new to our downtown community. Um, and, and I think, you know, there are other problems. Hopefully this is a, a first step in, in addressing other problems within that culture. Um, and, and I look forward to taking further steps in addressing those problems. Um, but, but right now, is there any way that people can, who do they report to if they experience this, this kind of discrimination? What, I, I mean, what can we tell folks? Well, if someone feels that there's been a violation of federal civil rights law, they can contact the Justice Department, the United States Attorney, or they can use a private attorney to file a civil rights action. Mm -hmm. But there's no mechanism uh, locally for reporting um, claims of discrimination like that. So once there is some additional language added to our alcohol ordinance, people will have a means of reporting locally? That's still to be decided. All the mechanics of that sort okay. of thing is something that I'm going to be working with the manager's office to come up with recommendations. Okay. And, and those recommendations will come through the regular process with a work session and, and uh, opportunities for public input at agenda meetings and stuff. I don't know about a work session. I mean, we're, we'll be prepared to, to make an agenda report. Okay, so folks will have the opportunity to see it ahead of time and, and offer comment at an agenda sure. session. Um, okay, well, I, I look forward to, to seeing that language come forward because, you know, this is something that I've personally heard reports of for a long time. And, it, it, you know, one, the, it seems like most of it is centered around dress codes. Dress codes are posted as a means, as, as an excuse to discriminate. And they list, you know, particular hairstyles that are often culturally specific. And I, I'm wondering how we can how we can enforce that. You know, um, I, does the attorney have any indication of, of, you know, how that could be worked into language where it's not just specifically race, race and sexual orientation and things, but you know, when, when they're posting dress codes that are, you know, quite blatantly racially based or even based, you know, indicative of a sexual orientation. Would that be considered in the language? Well, I was just contemplating that the ordinance would deal with discrimination and it wouldn't go down to the level I think that you're talking about. I mean, it, if there is discrimination, it would have to be proven. And sometime, uh, if you don't have an outright discriminatory act or statement, you have to use um, secondary and circumstantial evidence to prove that. So that's the kind of mechanism that we're going to have to be thinking about uh, to incorporate both in an ordinance and in policies and procedures about how the government would go about uh, establishing those uh, claims. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, and thanks um, to Commissioners Hamby and Gertz and Herod for working on this. Um, I mean, it's long overdue and unfortunately it's necessary and I think that's kind of a kind of sad and shameful situation that's widespread in our society and I hope that there will come a time when stuff like this is not needed. Ms. Wright, you want to speak? Um, Commissioner Gertz and Hamby might want to speak. Oh, okay. It's not going to trade your hand up. Uh, Ms. Sorry. Gertz. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a couple of words. Um, I, I agree. It's it, it's sad that this, this is even a topic for discussion uh, in this chamber, in this community. Um, <coughs> we do live in a community where there are all kinds of uh, boundaries of personal identity that, that, that seem not to be in existence oftentimes in conversations and um, communication between colleagues and relationships across the town. And, and to feel as if, you know, these stark differences are being highlighted in discriminatory acts by any business to any individual in a town is, is a mark against all of us and all our institutions. Um, and, and so this, I mean, really, I mean, kind of referencing your comments, Commissioner Link, is, is sort of a rhetorical shot across the bow. This is, um, this is an opportunity for this body to declare this completely inappropriate. 
um, and ugly. The, the next steps certainly are going to be challenging, uh, I think, even for the federal government investigating these kind of discriminatory acts is not an easy process. Um, however, what I think everybody in this room wants to ensure is that this isn't a discussion we have to have again in this kind of way, that, that we're not making this act for a single academic year or a single cohort of undergrads, that we're putting mechanisms and processes in place that ensure that, that in perpetuity it's understood Athens isn't a community that tolerates this behavior. So. Uh, again, I'm very sorry that this has to be here, but given the reports that seem completely credible and the volume of them, uh, I agree with Commissioner Herod. I mean, it would really be for us to deny our responsibility to ignore this. Thank you, Mr. Kurtz. Mr. Hambridge, do you want to speak to this? I think Commissioner Wright wants to say something. Well, I just didn't want to jump in, but I, I, did, I did want to follow up with some comments. And, and although this resolution that I'm glad is coming forward and us inserting it into the um, process as soon as we could. I really appreciate doing that. But the rest of it, the mechanisms and the other parts and the details that will be developed will not be coming in sort of as fast as possible as this. So it's going to come forward and be in the agenda cycle and the voting cycle so um, that people don't get confused with that. But I'm glad that you guys did get this together thoroughly and quickly um, to be um, voted on in January of 2016. Is, um, I'm glad that that's happening. I, I do want to um, add a little reading material to um, everybody's idea. Um, I met with some UGA students, um, and I want to thank Dustin Patrick Sammons, who's here, because he pointed out this um, book that I'm hoping that we can all read. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called <laughs> Urban Nightlife, Entertaining Race, Class, and Culture in Public Spaces by Reuben May. Um, it came out in 2017, and it's a sociological study, and the, it was done in our downtown. And they've changed the names of the bars and the streets, but you can read it in the descriptions of it. And it's um, some interesting reading, and it goes on along perfectly with what we're um, talking about. And I think that it's a – hopefully – I've been reading it over the break, and um, I just want to thank that student for pointing that book out to me. And I wanted to point it out to others as well. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Just hand sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, certainly, as, as everyone has said, this is, this is not an issue that we, that we, that we want to have to talk about or, or vote on, but it's happening. And if we look the other way, then we're just as complicit in it happening. And uh, so we certainly appreciate the um, attorney's office in helping with this, the manager, the mayor. And uh, the Student Government Association has also been very helpful with this. So I'm, I'm ready to vote on it, and I'm ready for us to, to start looking at ways to, to, to make this better. And, to, and, and I want people to know, and I think all of us do, that you know, certainly what Commissioner Gertz and Herod and everybody s spoke of, that this is just something we just don't want to see in Athens. And if it's happening, let's do something about it. And this hopefully is, is a good first step in doing that. So. Would you like to second that? I, I did earlier, but oh, did you? Okay. I think Commissioner Link may have also okay. done it, so we sort of did it at the same time. So, okay. Before we go, I do have one more thing sure. to say. That what's been interesting about the process, just in the discussion of this, um, of this action we're taking tonight, has been the conversation that it's generated in the community. I mean, it's you know, being a commissioner, people read the paper and they go, "Hey, Jerry, what do you think about this? Let me tell you some stories." And it's not, it's not just minorities that are telling me stories. It's, it's, it's men and women, white and black, and talking about the way that the, 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 the bouncer was making sure that the right people were in the club. Like right now, it's time for the young ladies to come through. They come in, give them drinks, and then now we can let the young men come through. Very strange things. It had been going on for years. Or they're not strange. It's been going on for years. So this isn't something new. And it isn't just about race, but it is about discrimination. And so I appreciate my colleagues bringing this forward to us tonight, and I hope we can move forward. It's interesting. You can't find much in, in a search for local anti-discrimination laws. There's not, not much there. So we, we may be um, on some new ground here, uh, but at least there's not much you can find easily. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, something. Um, Athens is a melting 
pot, essentially. I mean, I grew up here. I was born and raised here. And, you know, having gone through the public school system, we've had, we had issues along the way. There were issues within the government on discrimination at points. But I think it's what's important tonight is to, is that we are making a stand. We are saying that this isn't acceptable in our community. I think we also have to be careful, though, because we know some of us that met with some of the bar owners know that some of this is that there are there is another side of the story. It's not just alleged uh, and it is alleged until it's brought before the courts in the proper process. Um, some of the stuff is alleged. It's not, it may not be happening. There may be a, people with ulterior motives. So we need to be really careful that we're also representing, you know, that, that we that there are, we understand there are two sides of the story. And I I completely agree that it needs to be addressed and at this level it makes a lot of sense and I think we should move forward. I do think that we ought not just set aside alcohol beverage, al alcoholic beverage licenses. I think we need to be looking at any business license in this community because if I walk into loft and I'm in my jeans or my sweatpants and my t-shirt and they follow me around, I'm going to be pretty upset about it. So, you know, I, and I don't mean to pull them out and just get an example. I, I just think we need to apply this across the board to any business, not just to b businesses that happen to serve alcohol. Um, so with that said, I guess, you know, you have, we have a second. We can vote, perhaps. But before we will vote, I, I would urge anybody that has an interest in this issue, and I think everybody should, um, anything that's on our agenda is always online. And so this, this complete resolution is online for anybody who wants to read it. And, and what a resolution is, and Ms. Link asked this question, is it's a statement of values of our community. That, and when, when we adopt this, we, we have made a statement it's about this is, this is what we believe uh, in athens Clark County. And I think it's important. resolutions are very important, although they don't necessarily have the effect of law. But one other thing that I would, would mention, um, many people may not realize this, and I believe it's called Michael's Law that's going into effect the 31st of July, which will uh, require that anyone that enters a bar or that works in a bar has to be 21 years old. And so, so that's going to hopefully change the dynamics of the bar scene, uh, both in downtown and otherwise around town, and uh, and we we really mean business as a mayor and commission about the laws being uh, obeyed and uh, IDs being checked and, and and underage people not being served in our bars, uh, and I think it's going to be easier for us on uh, July 31st to do that. So with that, I will call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, guys. I think that was an important vote. Uh, so now we will, um, that concludes our um, scheduled business. Uh, any, this is the time in our uh, agenda that anyone that would like to address any item that's not on tonight's agenda may have their three minutes at the mic. Hello. Um, thank you for passing that. What a New Year's resolution. Um, so, um, yeah, I had a lot of friends sending me messages and emails when they heard about this. They heard about this coming in the media. Some of them are people who have moved away from here, um, at least in part because they've been discriminated against here and there were more welcoming communities elsewhere for them to go. Um, so I thought uh, Mr. Neesmith hit many nails on the head in his comments before y'all voted that this is not a new issue um, and that this is not just about race, although race is a huge part of it, but it's also about things like gender identity. Thank you so much for including that. Um, sexual orientation, age, um, all sorts of things. Um, so I think this is a really great first step. Can't emphasize enough that I hope to see this um, turn into an ordinance later. Thank you so much for being willing to work on that, Mr. Berryman. Um, I heard a few of you, I know it's kind of like a delicate issue, saying like, oh, this is kind of like sad that we have to talk about it. And in a way, it's like sort of sad that we have to talk about it, but it's not sad that we're talking about it. It's inspiring. It's great. The reason why this dialogue is happening in the community, I mean, this dialogue's been happening in the community in a lot of ways, but in a fractured way, and with people feeling kind of desperate and hopeless about it. And now this dialogue is happening, and people are feeling like something's actually happening in response to what's been their reality for so long. So this is not sad. This is... This is wonderful. This is exactly what needs to happen. I hope we have more of this. You all passing this resolution gives other people a chance to speak to this and feel like they're being heard. It gives other people a chance to feel like they have a means to do something about this problem that is very real. Um, and so I guess I just want to end. This isn't really for you all, but some people spoke earlier. Um, 
and uh, one of them said that if this passes, he will leave. Um, and I would encourage him to do so, because I don't think that this community has room for businesses that want to discriminate. Um, so please go to Atlanta, and I hope that they run businesses that want to discriminate out of Atlanta as well. I am so proud of you all for taking a stand on the side of justice tonight, and I really hope that we see the few businesses that need to go either significantly change their behavior or go. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Toole. Since this is a uh, spot to rebut um, previous comments, um, I'm fine with having a resolution that says we don't tolerate, you know, uh, ignorance and, you know, uh, bigotry, homophobia. And we all have friends that are gay and have friends that are black, and we get along fine in Athens. Athens is not a racist town. It's not a homo homophobic town. We have the Boy Baton Ball downtown, and it's cherished. It's an institution of Athens. So... I'm just, you know, that's fine. That's great if we're going to not condone it and put it down on paper. But before we start putting legislation on it and putting penalties and pulling licenses and, you know, whatever on there, let's get both sides of the issue. Let's put a committee together. And if it, you're going to do some max, you know, maximum penalties, let's put it to a vote to the people because it is affecting commerce and, you know, I'm, Fortunately, alcohol is a big piece of Athens commerce, and when you start, you know, messing with that where you could allow abuse to happen and corruption to occur, you know, it's going to present some problems. So think it out, you know, put it on paper and get both sides of it. Uh, talk to the Chamber of Commerce. Talk to some other, you know, student, students, basically. You know, one thing with UGA is 25% of UGA students should be above the age to drink. And, you know, if uh, it's such a problem, you know, maybe we should, I definitely think cracking down on 21 and under will uh, make a difference. But it's a mess down there some nights. And uh, going back to, uh, you know, Studio 54 let everybody in. But the main criteria was you had to be cool to get past that velvet rope. And there's bars and, and clubs in Atlanta also. They're not being you know, racist or, or homophobic. They're letting people in that are going to, you know, en enhance the, you know, the coolness of the establishment, I guess. So if you're not cool and you don't get in or if you look like a troublemaker, and I don't, you know, I don't see how you could put a hairstyle on there and, and ban something. The other thing, too, is private events. Usually those are published in the flagpole. You know, I'll go down there and say, oh, you know, why won't you let me in and then, you know, lodge a complaint and cause some problems for the business owner? But, you know, we should think it through, you know, take both sides of it, not deal with cry bullies, basically, and, uh, you know, think about Athens and the future and the commerce of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, we're on open topic. Yes, Mark. Okay. Um, First of all, I know the uh, Clayton Street whole deal has not gone down, but can we please do something about the parking uh, kiosk? We have to hear it every night we're open of people that get tickets, and half the time they're broken. I don't know if it's in the plan to go back to meters along Clayton Street or not, but as business owners, we have to deal with it when they're upset, which us having upset customers is not good. Also, I'd love to be able to talk to somebody uh, extensively about why we are forced to buy trash bags from the city. Um, I haven't been to a meeting in a while, so you guys may have discussed this, but forcing us to buy a product from y'all, um, I just, they're expensive bags. We can use other bags that cost 25% of that cost, and uh, we're already paying on top of that a fee to the county for pickup. I just don't understand why, if they need to certify that, okay, this is from so-and-so, why can't we slap a sticker on it instead of having to have an athens Clark County bag? I know the recycling bags are free, but just a lot, of, a lot of businesses downtown are a little upset that we're being forced to buy a product from the county. So that's it. Thanks. See you at dinner tomorrow night, Mom. Thank you, Mr. Bill. And, and I don't normally respond to things at the podium, but I will tell you all that the meters on Clayton Street are going to go when we do the streetscape or the, the kiosk. We're going back to meters. So. Hi, I'm Paula Loniak, and I live at 445 Ruth Street, Athens. And in keeping with the theme of confusion tonight, 
I, uh, I just saw this uh, article, and I don't know if anybody else is familiar with it, but I was just given it uh, within the last day or so. And I don't know, it's not dated, but it's the housing and community development news, the workforce housing, it says workforce housing needs assessment and strategy. And then it goes on and says something about stakeholder and focus group meetings were held on May 27th, and the study, housing study, was completed later this summer. So again, I'm confused, I'm sorry, I just don't know when this was originally uh, printed, but I'm wondering what, where, what the status is of the workforce housing study. I, I don't, that's something that I'm very interested in because I want to learn more about um, tiny houses being allowed in Athens and the workforce housing study is sort of associated with that at least I, I hope so, because it says here that um, they want to look into affordable housing and different uh, types of housing. So anyway, if somebody can enlighten me about what the status is of the workforce housing study, I'd love to hear about it and where to, where to go <laughs> to find out more about it and when to go there. I'm, I'm new to this whole thing with these government meetings, and I apologize for my ignorance or naivety, but I'm just a little confused. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you, Ms. Longyak. Anyone else? Hey. Hey, Paul. Paul Dorsey, 1600 Campbell Drive, <laughs> District 1. Tiny houses in in my property. Uh, I have 36 acres, and out on the back, um, where you couldn't even see them from the road. It would just be great if I could supplement my income. I know I'm I'm not making making ends meet. Um, if I could supplement it with uh, some tiny houses properties. If you turn on the tube every couple of weeks, I I see this, and it's a really cool thing. And I they saying it's taken over the nation by storm. And I Google tiny houses in Georgia, and it says if you pass through in Georgia with a tiny house, pass on through. <laughs> and it just astounds me. And there's a you know, UGA course taught on tiny houses. And here, what it may be, it may not be even allowed in Athens, and we're supposed to be on the cutting edge? Uh, come on. Um, not only tiny houses on my property, but how about for the city? Like she was saying, the tiny house uh, is possibly a way to get around the, the huge rents for students downtown, and it's a tiny sliver I know who qualify for such, who even want to go into something like that. I, I, I'm 60, and I don't think I could fit in one, and I'm not that big. But at any rate, uh, there are some real interested people here in the town who would like to check into this, and I think it's a shame that we don't have anything to offer them, even as far as a park uh, in the works, or any anybody, I don't even know, I haven't gotten to a good statement as to if they're allowed. Um, I think someone said if they're an accessory structure, maybe then, but uh, personally for me, it'd be four or five. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dorsey. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay, seeing none, we will go to our um, report portion of the meeting. Um, and the, the first reports are from the mayor. Uh, if I can quit sneezing. Uh, we have an uh, Adopt the Highway Proclamation. Lead Athens Class of 2016 uh, is adopting to keep um, picked up, the litter picked up on Macon Highway from Millage Avenue to McNutts Creek. And I would like to offer congratulations to um, Commissioner Wright, who has completed all of the courses required for uh, 
recognition as a certified county commissioner. And that a lot of work goes into that, so congratulations. Uh, and I'd like to remind everyone that we have a special, or all of our commissioners, that we have a special call session on Tuesday, January 12th at 4 o'clock to consider the appeal of a historic preservation commission decision, and we do need a quorum, so please attempt to be there. Um, and we've got uh, a celebration coming up, the 25th anniversary of the unification of athens Clark County on Thursday, January 14th at noon, and that will be down at the uh, uh, location at the Georgian Hotel. Um, and I have um, one, one final thing from me before we go on with the others is, um, as you all know, Manager Reddish will be retiring February 5th. His last meeting will be, with us will be on uh, in our um, voting meeting on February the 2nd. And in response to his decision, I've begun advertising this week to fill the manager's position as soon as possible using the same process I used to fill the auditor's position recently. An acting manager will need to be appointed while the, uh, while the selection process is underway. Therefore, tonight I'm announcing my nomination for acting manager, uh, assistant manager Blaine Williams. His appointment to, acting, to the acting manager position will be on the agenda of, the, of a special called meeting in conjunction with our normally scheduled agenda setting meeting on January 19th. And this is so that we can uh, meet the uh, provisions of the, of the legal provisions of having the announcement, uh, I believe, 10 days in advance uh, of the finalist. At that time, you will be asked to confirm his nomination to be effective at the close of business February 5th. Um, so now I will go to um, our manager, Reddish. Do you have anything to offer us tonight? No, ma'am, I do not. Thank you. Our, I should say our temporary manager. <laughs> uh, <laughs> never been called that before, have you? How quickly they forget. You know. <laughs> the term is lame duck. Uh, <laughs> something, yeah. Uh, 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 Ms. Maddox, our auditor, do you have anything for us? I do not. Uh, Mr. Berryman? Uh, nothing, thank you. Okay, well, we'll go to our commissioners now, and we'll start with Commissioner Bailey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And with Commissioner Dickerson. I, I do have two things that I'd like to mention tonight. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my colleagues here for their support over a year ago for the roundabout on Tallahassee Road. I'd also like to thank our staff for all the hard work and planning they put into it and seeing it to fruition. Uh, when it was first proposed, we had no other roundabouts in Athens. And there was some pretty strong opposition to it, the folks who didn't quite, they had no experience with roundabouts and they thought it was a much uh, more uh, complicated thing than it is. Uh, they wanted to have a traditional intersection there with, with red lights. I'm happy to report that now that the roundabout is open, I've been receiving very positive feedback on it. Even some of the people who were so vehemently opposed have told me that, that they, they've figured out that it is a much better configuration and that they're glad that we did that. So thank you all for that. Second item is uh, I had a citizen contact me with a suggestion for the county that I'd like to pass along. Uh, each year we solicit the public for a donation of a large evergreen tree to use as a Christmas tree. Trees are decorated, set up on the corner outside City Hall here, and they help make downtown much more festive. They look great. They're decorated, and our staff does a great job with them. However, the trees are cut down, have to be hauled into City Hall, then have to be erected, then decorated by our staff. Then, like all cut trees, they die, and they've got to be hauled away. So the suggestion I was given was for athens Clark County to plant an evergreen on that corner that's already large enough to use as a Christmas tree and that will continue to grow for years and be a delight all year long on that corner too when it's not decorated for Christmas. Um, then we wouldn't have to ask for a tree to be donated. One wouldn't have to be cut down. It wouldn't have to be hauled in, set up. wouldn't have to die on us and then be hauled away. It'd save a lot of trouble I think and and uh, you know planting another tree on our City Hall campus is is always a, a, a wonderful addition so it's just a suggestion from a citizen thought I'd pass it along thank you Mr. Mr. Smith. thank you madam mayor um, first of all I want to I want to thank uh, 
the folks in uh, traffic and public works for the support in moving the Mitchell Bridge Road uh, project along, which is a few months late now due to different things, but uh, they are pushing it along now. The merchants there have suffered a lot, um, and so I just encourage them to keep up the good work and, and get that project finished. Um, and that's really all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Hendricks. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just have a few, uh, few things. And Happy New Year to everybody, and it's going to be an interesting year with a lot of interesting changes. Certainly, Manager Reddish going out to pasture is one of them. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm, not, sh I'm not a farming person, but that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Uh, and then he leaves us uh, with uh, Blaine and Robert, and the enthusiasm of that is just killing me. But, <laughs> but, uh, but <laughs> at any rate... With that said, I'd just make a few uh, comments about uh, 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 Mayor Denson and I had a conversation here recently, which uh, she brought up this suggestion, which I think is a, is a good one, one of your, one of your good ones. Uh, there's not many. There was one. So that uh, about leaving the lights on downtown, uh, you know, it looks, so, it looks so nice. It sort of parallels what uh, Commissioner Bailey was saying about the tree. Uh, just having the, the holiday lights up uh, downtown and the trees just really makes it a nice looking uh, town at night and, uh, and, um, and I don't know if there's a way where we could keep them on year round. Uh, certainly the mayor and I could maybe take this to the downtown development authority to see if there's some shared expenses that we could help cover with. Uh, but um, certainly, uh, at least until we start the streetscaping, that's some, something that we'd like for you all to consider. Uh, and I know this year also uh, some T splice projects may be on our on our mind. So I don't know where we are as far as as far as how that will proceed. But I'm looking forward to to that discussion as well. And I did want to ask also, and I, I think we, I, I remember us delaying this uh, housing study discussion at a at a work session. I'm, I'm just wondering, is that that's coming back to us soon, isn't it? I, I haven't checked the latest work session schedule, but is it is Tuesday? It's actually this Tuesday. So there will be a, we will discuss the housing study this Tuesday at our planning department um, that will share with us the results of that, of that study. So, okay, at 5 o'clock, that's 5.30, that's right. I should know that, don't you think? <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you, Madam Mayor. Happy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Handy. Ms. Bell. What a difference a year makes. A year ago tonight was wonderful. I told y'all I was going to listen. But watch out, here I come. I've been in training a year with a wonderful staff, a wonderful commissioner, family, and manager Reddish, I'm going to miss you. I don't care if you go to a pasture or whatever, but I'm going to miss you. And thank you so much. But Happy New Year to all. Thank you. Ms. Terry. <laughs> um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, I did want to request uh, of the Mayor to assign something to the Government Operations um, Committee. I did have some conversations or some correspondence really with uh, David Clark um, about making some tweaks with our um, traffic management program and the neighborhood, neighborhood traffic management program. And I think there are some tweaks that we could make there that would make it a more effective um, program. So I am um, requesting the mayor assign that to the government operations committee to look at. Um, and then I would just also um, like to thank everybody behind the rail um, and also uh, in the audience for the um, constructive conversation that we had this evening about the resolution. I think it's, um, it's not the end of the conversation, but I think it's an important conversation uh, for us to have had and to have as we move forward. So um, I, think that's, I think we did a good thing tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heron. Before we move on, uh, <coughs> Mr. Heron and I had talked about this. I've actually already um, had discussions with this with uh, David Clark, our uh, transportation manager, and our police chief. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in the GOC committee since y'all don't seem to have anything to work on right now. So, uh, Ms. Ryan. Um Thank you. Um, Happy New Year to everybody as well. Um, I wanted to give an update from the audit committee that the bid review subcommittee that is reviewing the bids that have come in for the leisure services audit um, 
I want to thank them for working over the holiday break, reading bids, and we meet tomorrow. So I just wanted to get that little update to let everybody know that we're doing this as fast as possible, and I'm looking forward to a productive um, year working together. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just want to reiterate that, yeah, we will be discussing the workforce housing study next Tuesday at our work session. Um, and also Thursday night, this Thursday night, um, an item on the Planning Commission agenda is likely relevant to the um, tiny house movement. They'll, they'll be discussing possible changes to our accessory structure guidelines, um, which that could have some implications there. So anybody who's interested in tiny homes should attend that planning commission meeting, I believe 7 o'clock Thursday night in the planning department on Doherty Street. Um, I also want to address... Um, some of the issues we talked about tonight, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad to see the anti-discrimination resolution moving forward, and I want to encourage folks to participate in an anti-discrimination march that will be happening on the 18th on Martin Luther King Day um, in downtown. I believe it starts at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, there, there are a lot of, there. this is definitely an issue in this community, and it's been an issue for a long time, but it's, have been particularly public lately. Um, you know, 20 some years ago when I first moved here, there were not bars named after Confederate generals and there were not, you know, racially charged dress codes posted in the windows of downtown establishments. So there is definitely a change in the culture of our downtown and it's not a change for the better. And I think it's indicative of, you know, a lot of changes downtown and, um, you know, for a, a long time we've been talking about the, the large-scale student developments and the luxury housing downtown, and we see more and more of our workforce housing being pushed out of our in-town communities, um, which is affecting the diversity of our downtown culture. We're seeing a significant portion of downtown, which will probably very soon turn to more luxury student housing. Um, Pottery Town is now thoroughly in the hands of a developer, and... Um, you know, we're, we're going to see big changes to that section of downtown, and it's long overdue that we have some new downtown design guidelines, and I know that the mayor mentioned at a work session a couple months ago that she would be assigning that to the Government Operations Committee, so I hope that we can start addressing those downtown de design guidelines, possibly consider a moratorium to give us some time and some breathing room to address bigger issues downtown. and actually set the stage for the implementation of many projects in our downtown master plan. Some of the projects in our master plan are quickly being thwarted because we don't have the policies in place to guide the appropriate growth to allow these projects to happen. So I hope that we can address those downtown design guidelines very, very soon and um, you know, put a hold on some of the overzealous growth um, that's having a, a tremendous impact on the economic and the cultural diversity of our downtown so we can maintain some of the character that we we're very proud of and, and maintain that that creative culture and that diversity that that makes us who we are thanks thank you Slank. i'm sorry uh, mr gert um, happy new year everyone uh, i think 2016 is going to be a great year in the life of this community um, as a lot of things come to fruition I um, wanted to mention just a couple of things. Um, I, I was interested in updates. I, I think Commissioner Hamby mentioned uh, TSP lost. I'm interested in just an update on our prospective referendum dates for TSP lost package, uh, as, as well as whatever work has happened internally to prepare the way for that. Um, also interested in an update on uh, how we can move forward with the Clayton Streetscape project. Um, <coughs> it occurred to me that you know we, we may benefit from coupling the, the project bid with some other projects that are on the radar. I'm, I'm curious to know kind of what the management perspective is on moving forward there. Um, and, and then in terms of some other things uh, that, that have gotten some mention tonight, um, it, it appears that probably in the February or March timetable, the Legislative Review Committee, committee will begin talking about side work sidewalk expansion opportunities so for those of you interested in that just know that that's on the radar and if citizens have lived in other communities where they've seen mechanisms underway I'd, I'd certainly be interested in in having those ideas in the hopper and then finally um, it's 
people who followed commission business know I have a lot of interest in water quality and quality of our local environment generally. Um, and, and I'm really interested in um, having us begin to consider how we can have some tree canopy expansion mechanisms uh, in our community um, that, that enhance our air quality, that um, perform water uptake functions. This may be something that we can wrap into the water quality master plan that, that I know is underway over the next couple of years. Um, but I'm interested in hearing from perhaps the environmental coordinator or others in, in how we can begin to expand that work, um, both in terms of streetscape plantings and, and other public and private plantings. So thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Kurtz. Mr. Sands. Uh, again, Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you, uh, my colleagues, for, you know, maybe I got it wrong last year, and so I'll try to do it right this year, <laughs> or whatever the case may be. I'm looking forward to working with the mayor again as, as the mayor pro tem. Uh, it's going to be a very good year, I think, that, uh, you know, we've got a lot of things already. Looking at the list that Gene sent us just for January and February, you know, that dollar and 60 cents an hour that we we get paid we gonna earn every every penny of it because there's so many things going on and there were a couple of things that weren't on the list gene that uh that we need to you know we'll uh, i'll tell you about but it's uh it's gonna be a very good year and we're looking forward to working with everyone and uh like i say budget time is already here so we're ready to work with the budget Happy New Year. Um, I wanted to speak to the five-point study um, just briefly. I, I guess in part I want to say that I think providing seed money um, to the Five Points Business District is a great way to use tax dollars to leverage economic development in one of our core original business districts. I mean, I grew up here. Five Points and downtown were pretty much it until the mall and Lex in the Lexington Road, Willowwood, and all that developed. So I think it's a great way to, to help our community um, develop, and I, I look forward to seeing what they come up with. I um, also wanted to thank David Fluck at Central Services and his landscape management group. Um, out, on the, um, out on the District 1, there was a lot of uh, heavy rain flooding. I actually had a river in my backyard at one point. thought I might have to ask Santa Claus for a boat. Um, but uh, they came out and picked up some uh, tires that were dumped on the side of the road in, um, in District 1. With everything going on, they found time to do that, and I really appreciate their efforts. So. And with that, I motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Happy New Year. <laughs>